Good morning. It is the 4th of February. You'll notice a slightly different perspective on the brewery today. Um, we are about to try to fix the leak in this tank. Uh, I'm not brewing today. I'm glad I'm not brewing today. We went out last night to a pub quiz at Tom's Tap in Crewe. It was a brilliant night, really good. Um, enjoyed it a lot. Me, Simon, who's brewed here with me before. You may have seen Simon on a prior video and, um, and the good doctor, Dr. David. Um, we came third, which was pretty respectable given the good competition that we had. It was good fun anyway, uh, but I do feel a bit rough today. Um, so, a um, few things going on. Firstly, I'm gonna get to, well, I'm gonna try and find where the leak is in this glycol circuit in here. So, got some rivets to drill out. So let's get that done first. Uh, and I'll give you a few little updates. Right, let me show you what we need to do. But before we do that, Michael has brought uh, one of his amazing machines. He's got some ace cars, my cars, are fantastic. Look at that, beautiful. Anyway, he's making a brew, so he's gonna bring one in in a minute. He's not working here today or anything, he's just being neighborly. So what we're gonna do is, uh, somewhere in here, just to show you the, con the rough construction, uh, let's go zoom out a bit, there you go. So this tank is clad with uh, about 0.8, I think, millimeter stainless riveted all the way down and on the other side, all the way down. Uh, you've got the in input and output pipes for the glycol and a little um, thermo well. I am hoping the freeze is somewhere in there. I really hope it is. This was the point that was closest to the wall in the corner where it was the coldest. So logically, we'll start there. But I've got to get this, sec this section out. So I think we drill these rivets out all the way down. Couple in the bottom, couple at the top. Uh, I have spoken to the fantastic people at Elite Stainless Fabrications and uh, he's told me what to expect once I get in there. Um, um, that is insulation copper pipe taped down. So uh, let's have a crack at it. They're stainless rivets. I uh, bought some cobalt drills. Hopefully they'll be good enough. Let's keep them cool. We'll have a go anyway, see how it goes. I alarm, but it's not me. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> oh, it's you. I've been, wa I've been wandering around the unit looking for some mobile that's ringing. <laughs> and it was in here. Thank you. Now what happens is I make coffee, you don't take sugar, do you? Um, I'm easy come, easy go, to All be right, honest. Man, no. Easy come, easy go. Thank you. <laughs> right, that's the two sides done. Got two at the top, two at the bottom. Uh, 
if I do the bottom ones first, it ain't going to fall off because it's sat with these pipes going through it, hopefully. But I'm going to do the bottom ones first and then at least I'll see it coming if it's going to fall. Okie dokie, cover is off. Right, this is good. This is what I thought I would see um, when I spoke to Mark at Elite Stainless Fabrications in Swindon. Uh, he said there's two ways that they've done these. One is with this, uh, I think it's 12 mil Celotex Kingspan stuff, scored, wrapped. Um, but I believe the manufacturer of Celotex, Celotex themselves, Limited, uh, stopped making this particular thickness. Um, so they've moved to, uh, like I've wrapped the second tank, this uh, foil bubble wrap stuff now. Um, well, this is kind of easy to deal with. So I can definitely see some staining. Um, I'm just wondering where, where it burst. It's a little bit damp still there as well. All we can do is just get some of this off and have a look. I'm hoping I don't have to go all the way around and the burst is in this section somewhere. So let's have a look. Okie dokie. Right, nice and neat. Um, so, in or out, in or out, and then wrapped around in a spiral all the way around. And I can't immediately see any obvious sort of big ruptures in it. Um, this definitely looks a bit funky down here. So I think that's possibly the culprit. What I think I might have to do is uh, hook it up to the chiller and see where it comes out. Let me get some of this tape off the bottom, see if I can get a closer view first, and then we'll do that. Found it right away, I think. I think that's it. Um, I just disconnect, I just removed the two tie wraps from there, lifted the pipe up. And uh, I can feel it, but I can't see it yet. But right on that corner, <coughs> there is a split. I think, let's clean it up, see what it looks like. Um, right, we have definitely found the split. Well, one of the splits maybe, but certainly the one that I reckon is the, is the culprit. Um, let me show you. I asked Michael for some wire wool. That's what he gave me. Thanks, Mike. It'll last forever. Um, I've just given it a quick polish underneath just to get a better picture. And it looks like this. There you go, you can see the split there. So it's burst right on the weak point really where it's been bent. Um, it's a good hole. So that's a relatively easy repair I think. I'm just gonna cut it there, or there. And then I'm probably gonna use a plastic John Guest fitting just to bring out a, a beer line. Um, you know, just avoids the problem in the future then. I could, I could uh, solder on a new fitting and, or bend the pipe again or use a right angled fitting, but um, 
I think a John Guest will, will be absolutely fine. We'll give it a whirl. I don't think I've got the depth for an angle. Um, because I remember this thermo well was only literally a couple of millimetres proud of the steel. So that's, I can't really go any taller than that. It's pretty close that. Although I think the bung hole Bung hole. <coughs> I think these grommets, there's a big hole under there. I think that fitting would poke right out of that. Let's get this grommet out. It's one job after another, guys, honestly. Okay, I think that's a winner. That's the top one, you'll see. That's where the, uh, the copper pipe came out of. This is the actual size of it. Um, so I can put that right angle fitting in and it will just poke out of there. I think that's good enough. If I can get it close enough, get the cut there, I think we'll be in good shape. Yeah, about there. I think we're good. And there it is. So much aggro for such a little hole. Right. Clean that up. No, oh, don't tell me I've lost that wire wall. I have, haven't I? Shit. Right, created another little problem, but nothing insurmountable. Where I've cut that, I couldn't really get any closer to the bend because the copper went sort of stretched and thin. So. It wouldn't have been the right diameter for the John Guest fitting. Um, additionally, <laughs> the John Guest fittings are not 10 mil, are they? They're three eighths. These are 10 mil John Guest fittings, which go on. That would be perfect, but it's too far to the right now. So uh, it won't, I can't get the cover on unless I drill more holes. So, we need to cut this pipe again and extend it a little bit. We'll get a straight one of these. Mm, bloody hell. It's never easy, is it? All right, let's see what bits I've got in my toolbox. You will remember when we had the cooling problem, I bought a load of 10 mil copper pipe. So, that's going to come in handy. Oh yes, it's a beautiful thing. Right. Trip to screw fix is required. A trip to screw fix. Yes, I'll accept your cookies. Search. 10 millimeter. John. Guest. Coupler. Spell guest right, it would help. G-U-E-S-T. Although you can type any old crap into screw fix, it seems to find it. Uh, John Guest, speed fit, plastic, push fit, equal coupler, 10 millimeter, £2.73 each. Or twenty-one ninety-four for ten. Do I need ten? No. But I'm gonna get a spare one. Because I like to have them in my toolbox, so we'll have two of those. Done. Click and collect. Uh, continue shopping. What else do I need? What I need is wire wool. Wire. Wool. Medium steel wool. 
599, 799, I don't really care. 599, let's go for medium steel wool. Click and collect. Okay, continue shopping. What else do I need? I might get some 10 millimeter solder fittings just in case. 10 millimeter solder coupler. Go. 10 pack. I don't want 10, I only want one. There's two in a pack there for 314. Flowmaster solder ring, equal couplers, 10 mil, two pack. Done. Click and collect. Continue. What else do I need? What else do I need? I don't think I need anything else. I think that'll do. Right. Here we are. Screwfix Winsford branch. Everything in stock. Right, here we are. A big chunk of steel wool. One, two 10 mil straight couplers, two 10 mil solder couplers, perfect. Okay, back from screw fix and forgot the rivets, stainless steel rivets I need to put it back together. What a plonker. Um, we'll manage somehow. Uh, but I'll probably go back in a minute anyway. So, um, Mark from Elite has very helpfully put a mar marked a center line down the back of the tank. This black line that you can see there, which is the line where the holes are drilled in this cowling. So it all lines up. So I know exactly where I need to put this fitting at the bottom here uh, for it to poke through the hole, which is there. Um, so this pipe's a little bit short for us to do that. So we're going to cut it here um, and then use the coupler to join it up push it back in, tape it down, and then uh, get the cover back on once we've run some glycol through it and made sure it works. Uh, to cut the pipe, we just use this, borrowed from, also from Michael next door, little rotating pipe cutter, you just put it on and it scores, and you go round and round and round with it, and it cuts through the pipe. Um, so we know, we know roughly where it needs to go, we'll just bang it on and get started. There you go. No burrs, looks good. And then actually let's get the coupler on. Secure with duct tape, duct tape. If it's good enough for Mr. Herring, it's good enough for me. Although mine's black, so. Hmm. Okie dokie, right, so. In there, round there, round, 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 out of there, hopefully if there's enough push from the pump. If not, we'll swap them around. I can't remember which way around it was originally. Uh, we're gonna have to bodge it a little bit because the ink bird here is, um, set it to cooling. What's it set to? It's set to four degrees. There you go, it is pumping. So it's four degrees here on this little probe. The pipes are moving on their own, which is good. We do have some glycol. Oops, okay. Well, let me push the bubbles out for a minute. We'll just go check the return in a minute and make sure we've got some uh, liquid coming back. Oh, there's all kinds going through there. Let's go and have a check. Over here, at the other end, this is the return. 
Oh no, that's the, it's not the return. This is the return. And not really anything coming out of that, is there? Oh, there we go. It's a funky colour. Okie dokie. So we are pumping glycol through in there currently. Sort of the wrong way around, I guess, top to bottom. Either way, pumping out of there and back through. Uh, these are getting cold. No drips anywhere. Um, and back at the remote cooler end, we've got a good return. Dribbling in. So, I'm happy with that. That could have been a far more complicated uh, exercise. Okay, so I'm gonna get the cover on. I need to think about them rivets then, don't we? Um, how that might work. I think I need to rivet, I think I need to rivet them, don't I? I've probably got some stainless screws, but there's not really much to screw into. So uh, I'll probably go back to screw fix, get some rivets and uh, get that put back together. Okay. Onwards. You know what guys, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to put the cover back on yet because the space at the bottom here, there and there for heating. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to do the same with this one. I think I'm going to get some of that heating tape stuff or the silicone pads that Harry's used and stick them there and there. And then we can also uh, raise the temperature in this tank as well both for diastole rest and um, just to maintain on very cold days because we're sort of fighting against the weather here all the time. I think it's a good idea. So I'll get this foam back on. I'm just going to have a quick peep underneath here, measure the space, and then I'm going to have a chat with Harry um, again about which silicone pads are used. We're going to do that. Okay, so just having a little peep under here as I'm taping it back together. And uh, we've got a good spot there for some heating pads there, and one there probably as well. Nice and smooth, just needs a bit of a clean, but brilliant. Okay, that's what we're doing. So we'll just put that back temporarily. And then uh, we'll get on the internets, see what we can find to put a bit of heat in these. That base, really good. So fast forward an hour or so. Um, I was going to put it all back together and I thought, you know what, let's get the front cover off as well, which was heavy and dangerous and I shouldn't have done it on my own, but I did. And we've stripped off all of the uh, insulation board around the bottom half of the tank and we've now got from tool station four meet or two square meters um, of underfloor heating um, wire on a backing. Uh, I was kind of hoping it would fit just stuck on, but it's a bit too tall. It's going to impede the pipes under there, I can feel them, so I don't want to move that around. So uh, I'm going to take it off the back in like last time and tape it to the tank. Um, I've also ordered now the 5mm stainless steel rivets, which we need. We don't want really aluminium rivets in a stainless steel tank, we can avoid it. Um, so they'll be coming tomorrow from good old Amazon, and we can get the covers back on and get the tank back in the corner. So let's get this off the back in and get it taped on. So we are nearly there. I'm just taking care that none of these uh, heating wires cross because you get hot spots. Um, I mean, not, it's not a massive problem. Um, it, it will heat an underfloor, you know, tiled area to a maximum of 40 degrees. So it's not a, you know, it's not a huge amount of power. It's 150 watts per meter as it's supplied with those loops so individually these wires are you know they gently warm but we're sealing them in with this foil tape just to sort of make sure they've got good contact with the stainless steel like so uh, do a little bit more there and then once we power it up it should stop us from uh, 
losing all that heat like we did in a couple of previous brews. A uh, bit more round there to do. Okay, so we are all taped in, nothing crossing, and get the insulation back on. I think I am done for one day. Um, quite a bit done today uh, with this tank. I really needed to get it back into working order. Um, thanks to Mark at Elite Stainless Fabrications for who originally made the tank and sold it to El Elusive, who sold it to me. He was really helpful explaining the construction. So I was kind of prepared for what was inside, which is good. Um, all the rivets came out dead easy. Um, I've ordered some stainless rivets now so we can put the covers back on, but we found the leak, fixed it, tested it, no problem, put the heating wire on, buried that back beneath the insulation and we're ready for these covers to go back on now. So, sorry if it's gone a bit dark actually, don't know what's going on with this camera again. Anyway, um, other stuff, um, Sony ZV-1 camera, buy like 10 batteries if you're getting one because it, sh it sucks through them. I've used four batteries today recording this. I should probably stop it and turn it off in between stuff, but I'll just leave it running. Um, my fault probably, but yeah. Uh, this is battery number four. Ridiculous. Um, secondly, thanks to everyone who's ordered the bottles. Um, amazing. Uh, we've made 456 bottles, as I said. We've sold them in threes, sixes, some twelves, actually. Um, we're down to about 150 bottles left uh, of this batch. We'll brew it again, but there's likely to be a little gap when these run out before the next ones are ready. So... If you, if you want any, get to the website, fourpriest.co.uk, and we'll get them posted out to you. And the reviews that we've had so far, and the feedback, emails and stuff, just amazing. I was so anxious sending it out um, in bottles for the first time, just what the feedback would be, but everybody seems to like it, so just remember to let it settle. Um, but, yeah, wonderful. Uh, really pleased. Only two delivery issues. One was both FedEx. Uh, one, it's wrapped in fragile tape. It's clearly fragile. They lob it over a six foot fence. For, fortunately, no damage uh, because I packed in, well, you'll see, uh, I packed in these um, inflatable tubes. I took some video the other day. I'll put that on at the end of the video here um, just to show it, how, how we pack um, in these inflatable tubes. So fortunately, it probably just bounced across his garden, but even so, you shouldn't be lobbing fragile boxes over fences, right? And the other one, they just seem to have, it seems to have gone into a black hole they attempted delivery down uh, somewhere near Southampton um, and then they, now they don't know what's going on. So um, I've spoken to the guy that's ordered. Um, I, I'm perfectly happy to send him another one out if he can't get any sense from FedEx. It'll probably wind its way back to me at some point, but we can't have him without beer. So we'll definitely send another one if, uh, if he doesn't get it in the next day or so. Um, for those of you that received Murgy Straight and liked it, if you'd like to brew it yourself, uh, this isn't a commercial because there's nothing in it for me. Um, I just like the guys there. Cross my loof brew of kitted, Murgy Straight, all grain kit. So you can buy from them, get the yeast, the grain, the hops, everything, instructions. Um, we spoke about it a little while ago and they started to build some kits. And uh, we thought we would, it would be a good idea to, uh, to put mine on there. So they sold a few already, actually. Um, so let me know if you've bought one from them um, and how it went. Um, just if you want to do a side-by-side -side comparison, maybe. Um, what else is going on? Uh, Cross my loof, camera batteries, done the tank. That's it guys. I will show you the bottling process and then I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Good morning. Sunday, 29th of January already. Actually, it feels like about the 42nd of January. I can't wait for it to be over. At least I've had payday now. Thank goodness. So get some of those Christmas bills settled. Um, interesting day at the brewery yesterday. I took the camera gear down. I was racking, but I just intended to do a, a, a kind of private stream to see if um, the bandwidth of the internet connection we got there was, was good enough for perhaps some live streams of stuff in the future. Um, but I couldn't quite work out what I was doing. The settings were just a bit more complicated when you're live streaming than, than just uploading a, an edited video. 
and I ended up broadcasting to the world, um, which I cut it off pretty quickly. But then I thought, well, why not? I'll just set the camera up, point it at where I'm doing the racking and um, just chat along. And if people want to drop into the chat and say hello, they can do. So I think I was pretty clear that it was just a test. It wasn't a planned event and wasn't particularly well structured. And I was wandering off at various moments to go and do other things. But uh, thanks to everyone that joined. I think we tested it together and it, it seemed to work. And thanks for the feedback on the sound quality. We tweaked that as we went along. Um, and obviously there's a couple of moments of buffering, which I think are settings that I need to change in um, the OBS software. Anyway, I'll bore you with that later. So the idea there is maybe some live streams of brew days or bits of brew days. Or maybe if we've got interesting people at the brewery, we can uh, we can set up and have a chat with them as well. So don't know how it'll work, but I just wanted to test that it worked technically. So I just want to show you the labeling um, and packing process for the bottles for those that are interested. You've seen the bottling, um, and we'll do a bit more detail on that in future. But um, this week, we've um, in the evenings and particularly at the end of the week, um, we've packed more than half of that production run um, and shipped it out. Local customers have bought um, a lot of you guys online. Thank you. A few samples for uh, for people that have um, have helped us out and um, sent those out as well. So. Yeah, just wanted to show you how it all works. So assuming everything is in shot, um, we're going to do two because a lot of customers are all in two threes. Um, we really only set up to do threes, but we, we sort of take two boxes together and make it work. Um, anyway, so we take the first bottle. Um, we took a bit of extra care with the ones we were delivering locally uh, because I knew they'd want to swig them straight away. So. We kept them stood up so the sediment wasn't disturbed, but I'm just hand applying the labels at the moment. So we just get them straight on the bottle and then pull them taut underneath, tuck the ends under. That's one. I'll just do three, four now. So as you can see, painstaking. And we, yeah, and you get crink crinkly ones like that too. Let's just straighten that one up. There you go. I think for, for you label peelers, I think these are going to peel off quite nice if you want to stick them on your brew fridge or whatever. Um, or just if you'd rather put them into the recycling without the plastic on. And do recycle them, guys. Uh, I've been asked if I'm going to take the bottles back, and um, I'm, I'm thinking about that too. That one's terrible. Scrap. Start again. Um, yeah, I've been asked if we're going to take the bottles back, and I'm thinking about how we might do that now, whether there'll be a return point at the brewery. I mean, only really that's suitable for, for people ordering locally, I guess. Um, so with three done, uh, we do need to date them. So I've got my supermarket date code stamper, um, and on the box we've left a little white spot where we can stick the best before label. And truthfully, I've been a bit conservative with the date. I think these will last a long time, but I've just gone with, um, with June. And plus it might encourage you lot to order. It's certainly not less than that. Um, it might encourage a few more orders if you think they're going out of date. Anyway, there's the three. One, two, three. Um, if we are sending locally, um, then I'm using these boxes. They come flat packed. We pop, pop them into shape, um, do a little bit of folding at the bottom. You can see I've done that a few times now. And then inside there's a couple of um, dividers to stop the bottles from dinging into each other. And we just slide them in one, two, And three, and then because I'm a bit a bit obsessive, make sure that they're straight, and then we will drop in usually a full priest sticker, which hopefully won't fall out the front. While stocks last, tops over, and there you go. Um, I have been, because I've got some stickers that were, were provided by a, a very willing donor, um, and I'm very grateful, but um, 
we did get some stickers sent to us. So I've been sticking a few on the boxes to see what they look like. There you go. Thank you for your order. Now, if we are um, posting to you guys, they're going to get smashed to bits sending them out like that. So we need a better we need a better way, and that involves a bicycle pump and air sack. This is a new thing for me. Um, and Elliot spent a good chunk of his Thursday and Friday pumping these up. We need a compressor. We give it about 30 strokes. So after we've inflated that, we take a box, and pop it into shape again, fold the wings in, and we'll give it a bit of tape. I'm using this paper, paper tape rather than the plastic, plastic stuff. I think I've overused my plastic packaging quota on those air sacks. They, they recycle with your supermarket carrier bags, by the way. So I've not labeled these ones yet, but just to give you the idea. So we take one of these labeled up and dated, um, and we stick it in the protective tube. Make sure the necks are covered. And then they slide right into the box and away we go.